Hey guys, it's Miran from Speak of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing some fan art. I'm using colored pencils and I am well aware that the video is very long today. So I hope you can stick with me. I'll be talking about all of those in this video as we go along. So as you can see, I was doing the, the sketching and the thumbnailing earlier. We are now zooming straight to the line art because I used the colored uh, mechanical, mechanical pencil instead today. Um, okay, so we are doing Todoroki Shoto from Boku no Hero Academia, also known as My Hero Academia in English. So we are doing Shoto, <laughs> who happens to be one of my favorite characters alongside Kirishima Ijiro. So he was my first, or Shoto rather, is one of my first favorite characters um, because he suits like the Bishonen knight cool guy thing but because Kirishima was so precious and sunshine and sweet I ended up liking him as well so I have two favorite characters in the series <laughs> and Shoto our, our character for today uh, has the superpower also known as Quirk of being able to control half ice or ice and fire so he can control them on both hands or uh, yeah anyway <laughs> um, so yeah, he ended up being one of my favorite characters. He's one of the main cast, so there's a, quite a bit of development to his character as the series progresses, especially in season two. Um, yeah, in the manga he gets a little bit more, or in terms of his, his family he gets a bit more as well. But I won't spoil that for you. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think my teaser last Wednesday. Uh, was covering his face, though the hair color should have hinted on who I was drawing. And my caption was, you know that I'm deep in a fandom when I do fan art. And the reason I say that is because I don't draw as often or as much as ar some other artists, so I'm not the type who's able to produce an artwork in every two to three days type of thing. So. I tend to focus a little bit more on my own original characters or on or on thematic um, pieces. So like last year's Flora series was one of those thematic stuff that I really really like that I really focused on. Sometimes I do character designs on my channel but I haven't really uploaded any in quite a while. But I really like my, my OC so <laughs> I almost, you know, almost always focus, focus on them. So the rare exception is when I do get into a, a fandom and I fall very very deep. So some of them would include Fate or Fate Grand Order, the Fate universe in general. I did the Knights of the Round Table last year. I did some fan art of Ku, Hulan, Caster. Um, I have some... I kind of want to do more eventually though I'm trying to inter intersperse that with other stuff. Another would be Vocaloid. I've done fan art for Kaito, Meiko, um, yeah. I, before I started my YouTube channel, I also did Miku, Rin, Len, Luca, um, so it's very deep in that. Another one is the Persona fandom, which is, I'm more focused on three. So I have like two or three artworks on Mahoto slash Minato Arisato. Um, yeah, those are a couple. I don't think I've done others so far. Oh, I did Umi Sonoda from Love Life, though that was like one piece only. Yeah, so when I do say that I'm deep in the fandom, it means I'm taking a lot of, or I'm taking some attention and time away and concepts away from my own original characters or from thematic stuff to do fan art, which means I am very, very invested in it. So I was, I got into Boku no Hero by one of my friends uh, to the point that I ended up cosplaying I say an adult, but I chose, rather, I chose to cosplay one of the characters last year, I think, in, in a con. I went there as Jiro Kyoka, mainly because I had the right clothes, I guess, or my haircut and, uh, I guess, my clothes and my style sort of suited her or fit with her the most, so after the cosplay, the, the clothes didn't go to waste and I ended up incorporating her stuff into my wardrobe <laughs> so it was that it was that kind of 
it goes that deep into that pit of hell of fandom. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so now, I felt like this time I did some fan art. So originally, I wanted to draw something summery themed. Maybe it doesn't. It has to be like bright and colorful. I was thinking it could be one of my characters, or it could be just a random, you know, a random person or a random design. And then for some reason, while I was doing my thumbnails and my sketches, I thought of doing shoto. I guess because of the ice and fire thing and summer, so the original concept had him or was actually was maybe in a summer beach house or uh, you know the typical splitting watermelon stuff or maybe sipping on some juice and stuff. But as it, when I as I was refining it, I wanted to show him chaining. I guess so. This, this is something a bit more after chaining. His he's chilling out. Because he's half ice, getting <laughs> he's chilling out by the windows. Maybe after practice, he has a water bottle. Uh, yeah, I felt like I wanted to do this concept a bit more. I might do another summer theme thing eventually. Cause really, right now, as of recording this video and that's of recording this audio, right now it's so freaking hot in my country. Um, we hit sometimes around forty degrees already, and it's only April. And it's not even the middle of summer yet. So the middle of summer here is around May. That's when, like, that's when the heat just soars up. <laughs> it goes 40, 44, 45 sometimes. Like last year we hit 40 something, 45, 46, I think. And that was, that was the worst. <laughs> it was really hot. So you can expect some summer, summery looking stuff from me. Or maybe rainy stuff, because I'm, I'm just waiting for the rainy season to come back. <laughs> it's so hot, I swear. Um, it's, it's a type if you go out nowadays without any kind of shade or umbrella or water, you're, you're gonna get the heat stroke. So, my whoever's watching my videos, if you do live in the Philippines and it's still April as you, you're watching this, please make sure to bring an umbrella or a hat and always have water with you. Please don't skimp out on water, I swear. I, I encounter so many ambulances on, on the road these days, I guess because people are getting heat stroke. So please take care of yourselves. It's super hot. And that's also why the, the theme kind of fits Shoto. I mean, he can cool himself down with his eyes, but it's also hot because he has a fire side. That's, that was the entire idea, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Whew. You're eight minutes into the video. Uh, what else did they say? Right. The video is long. I know. Um, usually, my videos try to keep within the 10 minute range. Also, because even for myself, it's a bit hard to talk about stuff for 14, 15, 16, 20 minutes. But sometimes when I'm doing a lot in the video or I feel like I want to show the process a bit more, the video can, can hit. 15 to 20 minutes and this happens to be one of them so with watercolor i'm super proficient no, i won't say i'm super proficient i'm pretty proficient or i'm pretty confident with it uh, i know what to do i know what kind of colors to pick i don't i know how fast i can be with watercolors with a piece this size is the same thing as with a shoto piece i could maybe knock this out in two three hours max Especially for compositions like this that are pretty simple. Um, but with colored pencil, because there's a bit more process and hesitation and a bit more techniques, I guess, being applied to it, I wanted to show it a bit more, I guess. So you see me doing stuff like the burnishing. So the pencil on the right side you see a while ago, or that I'm holding right now. Eh, I'm moving too fast. Anyway, that, that wooden pencil that you see is a burnishing pencil. If you're not familiar with that, um, I don't know what it's made of, to be honest. It's sort of a pencil that you use to like smoothen out the colored pencil pigment to the paper so it, like, it spreads out a bit more. So the paper that I'm using is actually watercolor paper. It's hot pressed and it's super smooth. It's the, Aquare the Fabriano Aquarello Artistico Extra White 100% cotton paper. So it's super smooth. It's super soft i guess but even though 
it's like that. Um, it still has some grain to it. So that's why you see the white texture peeking through even if the colored pencil is really soft, which is what Faber-Castells are known for. Um, in comparison to cardstock, which I used for the Flora series, that's really, really smooth. That's like completely... It's like it, it, it has like a coating on top of it to make it super smooth. But since I didn't like the size of the cardstock, and I rather the bigger size of the watercolor paper, I ended up using the watercolor paper, which might be a waste. And I should buy cardstock that's bigger. But since I haven't done that, I, I'll make do with this. I say make do, but this is not expensive. <laughs> eh, oh well. <laughs> So I use a burnishing tool, pencil, and cotton buds to like spread the pigment evenly on the paper. Uh, that makes it look a bit more smoother, and it also sometimes allows you to add in more layers. So I guess I wanted to show that process a bit more. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just a long video. <laughs> I I do like how it turned out though. I'm happy that it looks sort of well composed. I mean, uh, uh, how do I put this? <laughs> it's not super detailed, it's a static piece because he's just sitting down. But I like that the background turned out pretty nice for me. I put a lot of effort into drawing the window somehow and putting in the clouds but still made it look like a window. And then the wallpaper behind him, I had an idea of just maybe leaving it blank or maybe painting it in the watercolor instead. Um, I'm happy that I still tried it out with colored pencil because the idea was I wanted it to look a bit more blurred so that it's more focused on Shoto. Um, it's a bit hard to pull off with colored pencils for me since I'm not super versed in it. So I wanted to do watercolor at first so that I can just mix the watercolor super super diluted just for it to have color and make it look blurred. But because I, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to uh, medium, so I tend to like it that when I use colored pencil, I kind of want to stick to just colored pencil. <laughs> That's a downside a little bit sometimes, but whatever. <laughs> I guess I'll learn eventually, but it still does look a bit more... It doesn't look distracting, I guess, the, the wallpaper behind him. Even the sky isn't super distracting, and it all sort of like leads to him so the V from the the reflection from the windows is like pointing towards him and then the wallpaper is also sort of pointing towards him so I kind of like how that turned out that, that wasn't super intentional but yay it, it looks pretty cool it's not super it's not super intense or detailed or amazing but I kind of do like how it turned out. And since I've started doing Final Fantasy Boku no Hero Academia, you'll probably see more from me. And right, at this point, um, I kind of forgot that he does have a burn mark over his left eye? I, I, mm, what side is that? Yeah, that, that's his left eye. <laughs> um, as part of back, his backstory. It's a good thing I remembered actually before I finished off the piece. I just sort of made it a bit darker, added, some sh added in some shadows again, and we're done, basically. Uh, I enjoyed doing this piece. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and me babbling for 14 minutes. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Deventart, or even subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you around.